I have written a little article uh, about the future. LARP and I, until death do us apart. And I will read it for you. I have LARPed half my life. I've tried to quit several times, but I'm still drawn back to the mystery, to the emotions, to the creations of stories and alternative lives. At last, I've settled down by the thought that I will probably LARP for the rest of my life. For this anniversary Knute book, I want to look into the future of LARP. What will it be like to LARP for my comrades and I, let's say in 20, 30 years? Then I realized, in the future, I'm dead. <laughs> in my own LARP creations, I have been obsessed with death and dying. Just a Little Lovin' was for me a lot more about the fear of death than about sex, friendship, and the 80s. That's why I wrote it, that's why I played it. The reason, I'm scared to death by the thought of my own exit from life. No death plays a part in most LARPs. We kill monsters and slaughter our enemies and assassinate kings. You can meet your destiny as well, die and get a new character or maybe not. Even funerals have been a huge part of my Nordic LARP experience over the last 25 years. One of the best funeral scenes I've played was in Hareme from 1998 as 1001 or Arabian Nights Arabic love fantasy LARP outside Bergen. When someone died, everyone should gather around the newly fil filled grave to tell stories about the one who passed away. Not just stories, but most important, we have to say every bad thought we ever had about that person. The more gruesome, the better. If you hid even a flicker of hate, that might be the reason that person will haunt you. I, as a young hot wife in the harem, shouted all my hatred of the bitchy first wife laying there, so still in her open grave. As the player playing the wife struggled to keep a straight face at a litany of harsh words, she eased out of her character. For us, then, this was a game, something we played, not a story about death to make you meet your fear of the final stop. Not like that time in the 80s, when the lid of the coffin snapped my world away and Hank, the janitor, met the total darkness while my friend Sky, played by my daughter Tira, cried his heart out. It is not just me. In the future, we're all dead. Do we reflect that in our stories? I know there have been old people dying in our games of disease, of aging and natural passing, but what stories do we tell to meet the fear of our own death? Old and Wise from 2014 lets you take a glimpse into the future that awaits us all being old. A LARP about losing control over your bodily function and your surrounding. In this LARP, you will play an elderly, elderly person living in an elderly, uh, I cannot say this word, elderly home. While drinking coffee, talking and playing games, time slips through your fingers. That's the way this Dutch chamber LARP is presented to the player. It's about the fear of losing your world bit by bit. In the game Dementia, which takes place during a day at a home for elderly also, a whole lifespan can take place. The game asks, who are we when our memories leaves us? In the game Fallen Stars, it is the world around us that loses the memory. As an old artifact from a flea market, you will at the end of the game be forgotten. Maybe this game showcases our biggest fear for our future, that of losing our identity. We do not fear death itself. I mean, hell is cancelled. But we fear losing over stories. Most of the games about getting old, sick and dying are black box LARPs or short scenarios. 
I suppose that's because we really do not want to dig too deep into that kind of emotion. Another short game about old folks' home is Dödens Gang på Avde, where death turns the pensioners into slow-moving zombies. In my experience, we often tend to play the old characters in our games with humor and distance, or with zombies. In the future, I guess, more of us will play them with deadly seriousness. Let me tell you why. Before I... I need water. Can somebody give it to me? Before I start writing this essay, there wasn't a single soul I knew of in the Nordic LARP community who had died of old age. But now he's dead. The first one of us, the grand old man with the hat, Elge Larsson, bless his memory. He died of cancer. I think of one LARP meta technique which might express my visions of this way to wither away, disappearing. The homosexual man dying in the black box tragedy, Om Sanningen Skal Fram, had to lay still at the floor, surrounded by friends, nurses, family, or just meta players. We all pushed the patient to the floor with both hands. He is sick, crying for help, doesn't want to die, can't move. One by one, slowly, ever so slowly, we release the pressure, removing our hands. When the last hand is lifted, the one on the top of his head, he dies. The designer who wrote all the LARPs I've mentioned are still young, and the majority of the players were too young to feel the breath of death behind their back. I know of only a handful of active Nordic LARPers over the age of 60. So why write about death? Is it because it makes the story dramatic or poetic? Or do they feel, like me, that death is such a harsh part of life, so we just have to play our fears away? In the future, I and all my LARP friends will be pensioners. Will it still work to use LARP as escapism? Or will we use LARP to process the reality of not living anymore? I guess senior LARPing will be the first step towards the end of my LARP career. Today, LARPing can be about fleeing from stress of work and relationships. In the future, I will need LARP more and more to forget how quickly my train is rushing towards the final stop. As we, the pioneers, pioneer organizers, grow gray, at least beneath our rainbow-colored mohawks, it might be harder for us to design and produce game ourselves. I pray that a younger generation um, will feel the duty and pleasure, pleasure to organize honorary games for us, the old LARPers. In this way, you can contribute to keep my death at bay. Can we do even more with LARP than to shut out the, rea the reality of the Grim Reaper? I hope we can make games that can help us deal with the fair. My goal in life has always been to die sated, but I am afraid I'll never reach a point where I can't say I'm ready to go. I tried out my thoughts about the afterlife, LARP, after LARP? <laughs> the afterlife in the LARP limbo a game in which every player had died and were offered tickets to the next world, be it reincarnation, heaven, or the endless void. I saw this game as an opportunity to conquer my fear of being dead. Each player got to decide what the character's moment of death had been. So I decided that I'd caught my sister with, in bed with my boyfriend and had shot my sister who I love more than anything else in this, on this earth, in the heart, and my boyfriend between his legs, and myself in the head. Before the game started, I had really prepared to choose to pass on, but when the one and only ticket back to life was offered, I didn't need hesitate for a second, even if the life I would wake up to was the worst imaginable. So, I think I need more training through LARP to let go, to leave it all behind. 
I want to immerse myself in the act of dying, experience my own happy, divine, and sad funerals. In the end, are we all children playing out the things we are afraid of? Or are we like the Freemason, Freemasons who place each new member in a pitch black coffin, inventing rites and rituals to get a taste of our own death and possible rebirth? Is the key to appreciating life the knowledge that is going to end? My father was a Freemason and his words have rung in my ears since the age of 12. Memento mori, remember your death. Our intention with Just a Little Loven was to interrogate and explore our innate fear of death. In the meta hour between acts, we designed our technique specifically to increase tension and make players frightened of what might happen. The last time I played Just a Little Loving in 2015, it was my name on the pillow. I lay there, stiff with fear in my coffin, acutely aware of the rise and fall of my chest as I watched the bright summer sky above. I knew we wouldn't all die, only the ones whose lids were closed. The second it turned pitch black, I refused to understand. Could it really be true? Was Hank, my character and buddy for four years, dead? Then the tears, then the peaceful silence, then the funeral procession. I felt the silence and the emptiness, and I remember thinking, so this was die? Mm, not so bad after all. Then I heard my, heard my real-life daughter's character begin to sob, and the song remi reminded me of my own very real fear of the end. But lucky for me, I got to experience the enormous relief of opening my eyes on the same bright day. I got to watch the birds, the sky, the wind in the trees. LARP over. I am alive. I imagine that in the close future there will be LARP funerals, the sign by the one who is dead. Then you can be laid at, to rest as a, an Egyptian priestess from the year 2000 before Christ, or like a ma mafia boss. Do you think this is far-fetched? That death is something we should respect too much to play with? There was actually a suggestion last year of making a funeral gathering for Elge Larsson so he could experience his own funeral before he passed. These days, people are making destination weddings with a taste of LARP and fantasy. Why not go all the way? Make your funeral a LARP. Maybe we should start now so that I can be prepared to ease my pain, my fear of death. Come play with me on the day I die. The nurse can call all my LARP friends for a pop-up LARP. I can die a queen, a king, in an old-fashioned historical game, but most likely when I'm going to die, maybe 20, 30 years from now, we will probably mix LARP with augmented reality, AR. AR and other kinds of virtual reality would be awesome for old and sick people since movement is troublesome. It will be more advanced and immersionist and 360 than nowadays tabletop for sure. I will give you the last scene from the hospital hours before I pass. I envision my sortie will be in a retro future playing Star Wars Go with Eirik Fatland, Elin Nilsson, and Klaus Rosted. <laughs> yes, I choose some old LARPA friends, I guess many of you know. The nurse have messaged them to gather for the grass move final. I am, of course, the hero, Han Solo. With my eyes, I move my character around the room while laying motionless in bed. The nurses and doctors are set to look like stormtroopers, but they don't know they're playing with us. <laughs> two, <laughs> two soldiers in my room now. I use my gunner to keep them at bay. They are disrupting my meaningful conversation with R2-D2, played by Klaus Rosted. 
about how we will construct a brand new world at a distant planet, a place for year-round LARPing. R2D2 makes his sweet mechanical sounds and managed to mute the soldiers, but they are still annoyingly close. And when I shoot them down, there is continuously two new ones appearing. But here comes C-3PO to rescue, played by Eirik Fatlan. <laughs> Crushing through the glass door. Together we finally kick out one of the soldiers through the open door, when suddenly a dark figure emerges. Dart Vader, played by Eli Nielsen. <laughs> Just two meters away, with one cut of his laser sword, he takes off C-3PO's head. He turns to me, my head's next, my heart beats frenetically, but he doesn't kill me, not yet. Darth Vader kneels by my bed, takes his helmet off, and I recognize the player. I see Alien's compassionate eyes, filled with tears. You will be missed, Hannah. Thank you for playing along all these years. And the last thing I see before all play is gone forever is Darth, Darth Vader killing Han Solo, me. Thank you.